Justin Hoover. Usually would be this time of year, but we are not for obvious reasons. Teddy Cahill, though, of Baseball America, joining us right now live from the Met in Hoover. Teddy, we appreciate your time, although it is bizarre that we're not sharing the same locale this week. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different without uh, without you guys here, without any of the Mississippi schools here, but uh, the, the beat goes on here in Hoover. It looks like it, and, and we even got a weather delay. Now we've got... De- uh, some debate, anyway, over should it be moved to uh, the Dome in Arlington. What, what's your stance on that, by the way? You're there right now. There's been that discourse of they should play in a place with a Dome. What do you think? So I understand the desire to Dome this thing. Um, you know, this week has actually been pretty good. It's just been that one day, and the rest of the weather has been great. But, like, I, it, it gets hot here. It rains here. Like, all of that is true. Uh, I also understand the centrality uh, look, look argument for it. Uh, you know, it, it gets great crowds here. The place like really embraces it and everything. So I, uh, I guess I'm kind of on I'll leave it in Hoover, but if you do want to put it in a dome, I would much rather go to Houston than Arlington. I just, the ballpark in Arlington is so big and it, it would just, it's cavernous. And like, I, I think everything would just get lost in there. Um, so I, I am, I'm not an Arlington proponent, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what happens when the contract comes up. Teddy, as you're looking around here at the SEC tournament and all the other postseason tournaments, you know, who's starting to stand out to you as a team that's that's really building momentum and getting hot at the right time? Well, I think uh, you know the team that just won here, Alabama, stands out in a in a big way. Just the way that they've been playing here uh, and playing overall over the last few weeks, um, you know, playing themselves into potentially hosting a regional, likely hosting a regional at this point. Uh, that's been really impressive. And then Clemson is, uh, you know, the, the, the way that they've played over the last several weeks, really the second half of the season entirely has been, uh, has been really, really impressive. But from a conference tournament standpoint, I, I think what, uh, what Alabama has done has, uh, has definitely piqued my interest this week. And then we'll just turn that question around. Who's somebody that you you know you would have thought okay, they could make a big statement this postseason, and they are just not at this time of year playing their best baseball. I mean, it's hard to look away from West Virginia, which uh, a week ago was going to to Texas with a chance to you know more than a chance to win the Big Twelve. They uh, they had a two game lead on Oklahoma State, a three game lead on Texas. Uh, they end up getting swept in Austin. There's a three way tie for the Big Twelve title. Uh, they get a another chance to to do something this weekend in Arlington and they go 0 and 2 and you know they're out and they're going back to Morgantown for now but it looked like there was going to be a regional in Morgantown um you know I had a hotel room booked in case I wanted to go there for regionals and uh now it does not look like there's going to be a regional in West Virginia so the they're on a five game losing streak going into the NCAA tournament and uh, it's just a, a brutal brutal finish uh for for the Mountaineers Teddy Cahill of Baseball America joining us on the Farm Bureau guest line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team. So let's turn the page to Southern Miss, who should be starting or should have just started in the Sun Belt Tournament. Is it? I've got your projections up right now. You have them as a two in Baton Rouge. Do you think that's locked in, or, or if they win this thing, can they host? And Is that the requirement? Do you think they have to win this tournament in order to make that jump into a top 16? Yeah, I, I do think they probably need to win the tournament. Their RPI just is not in an amazing spot right now. It's not a bad spot, but it's not good enough to like really be looking at hosting without winning the tournament. I think they need the help uh, that would come from another three or four wins, whatever it would be, for them to, to win the tournament. Um, and I also don't think that they're like fully locked into going to Baton Rouge. You know, there are two regionals in, in Alabama that they could very easily get sent to as well. So. They're a little fluid, um, you know, winning as many games as possible, whether that gets all the way up to hosting or whether that just gets out of Baton Rouge and into Auburn or Alabama. I, I think all of that's helpful for uh, for the Golden Eagles. We opined over this yesterday on the Alabama front. You mentioned them uh, playing their way into a hosting spot. Do you think the, uh, the, human, the humans in the room would, would look at Alabama and say, even though it wasn't the players' fault, it wasn't the current coach's fault, but that was a team that did have to fire their coach in the middle of their season for allegedly being involved in placing a, a bet against his team. Do you think there's any reluctance in that room to reward them 
with a host knowing that that's what happened to that program earlier this season, even though it was nobody currently there's fault. So a few days ago, I did kind of think that, like, do they really want those kinds of headlines? Because, like, they know what's going to happen. They, again, they're humans in the room. They, they, can under, they can make these connections. They know what's going to happen if Alabama has a regional. Uh, on the other hand, you kind of can't ignore what's happening on the field on some level. Like, if they were borderline still, you might be able to say, like, let's, let's not do that. But they're becoming less of a borderline case. Uh, I haven't looked to see what happened to their RPI after beating Auburn today, but like they're in the top 10 in RPI effectively, like they're somewhere around that, that benchmark. And they've won now 18 SEC games in total and they've won 40 games overall. Like it's becoming harder to say that it's a borderline case. And then you also look at what happened to them in basketball. Of course, there were plenty of negative headlines there and they could have decided to send them to a different region and yet they sent them to New York knowing full well, again, what would happen, uh, you know, what kind of story that would be. And they just put it in the, in the media capital of, of America. So I, I think that while it's understandable to, to wonder that, I, I think that if, as long as they're not a borderline case, you don't have to worry about it too much. And uh, I, I, at this point, think that Alabama has, has done enough to kind of eliminate that kind of doubt. Teddy, let's stop talking about all these good teams. We'll talk about Mississippi State for a second. A, a big task ahead of, of Chris Limonis this offseason. Got to really reshape that roster if he wants to have a successful 2024. Starting with the pitching coach, are there any names you've been hearing or any names you think Mississippi State should be looking at to bring in to, to fill that vacation, that uh, that vacant position? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a it's a tough job uh, in many respects because you you have um, you have a lot of coaches that are going to look at that and say, well, like there's a lot of instability there right now, and do you want to leave a stable situation for an unstable situation? Uh, you got to really believe in yourself uh, to do that, or, or really want you know just really want the opportunity to uh, to get an SEC pitching coach job. I do think uh, pro ball might be the way to look here. Uh, there's a lot of advantages uh, to, to bringing a coach in from pro ball um, versus trying to hire away a college coach who's a little more used to some of the stability that the college baseball brings. Um, so I don't have any great names right now. I think that uh, they're still in the process of, of vetting through stuff. Um, I know they want to move quickly, but they, they also have to you know, go through the right process at this point. And then staying here in the state, you know, Southern Miss made it really easy on themselves. They, they made the move we all thought with Christian Ostrander taking over there. You know, that program has just been so good for so long and so consistent. Is Ostrander a guy that you like to continue that consistency? Yeah, I, I love that hire. Uh, you know, they're, Southern Miss does a great job at, at staying internal uh, a lot of the times anyway. And uh, Oz definitely knows what it takes to win there. He's been a big part of, of everything that they've done. Uh, you know, you look at the success of the pitching staff, and obviously that, that's, uh, that's him to a, a, a huge degree. And I think that he's ready to be a head coach. I, I think that they've, uh, they've really worked to get him ready for that role and that he'll be ready to step in once the season ends and, and keep things rolling there in Hattiesburg. And, um, you know, hopefully he can uh, you know, take it even to a higher level. I mean, we've seen what he's done with the pitching staff. Uh, so I, I, I have full confidence that, that there, that's going to be a hire that they're going to be very happy to have made, you know, a year, five years, maybe even 10 years down the line. Teddy, we appreciate you stepping away from the action to talk to us. Uh, enjoy your week in Hoover, and uh, hopefully we'll actually see you there next year. <laughs> that would be great. 